That's the loss of faith in this cult. I do not want them to be abused by myself and the other members of this cult. It's very sad, particularly in a cult like ours, where if I play with kids, because it's, you know, if you're out in the park, et cetera, you're, you're not in a critical moment. Parents don't usually abuse their children in casual moments. They abuse their children when they're highly stressed out at critical moments. Well, when I'm out in the park or whatever, I'm not in critical moments and would love to play and support and enjoy children. Except in the United States, I am immediately considered a pedophile if I spend more than 10 seconds intently focused on any child. Apparently, it's not healthy for a man to care about children in the United States. It is very suspicious and should be presumed to be perverted, which is the eyes that the United States cult gives me when I do something healthy by showing quality attention in a child. The fact that 75% of all abuse of children occurs by parents and close family friends suggests the opposite, that if the parents cared for their children, they would tell the children the truth and say, there's a 75% chance that your worst moments are going to come from us and close family friends. You may want to meet a few strangers so you can go for help if we get our heads too fucked up our ass and uh, hurt you because strangers have a 25% chance of abusing you relative to our 75%. Well, that'd be a kind thing to tell the children and uh, a healthy way to integrate the cult to remind us that 99% of all the people in the world are strangers and they will remain strangers as long as we have the barbed wire prison of don't talk to strangers because they're strangers. And that's why they're strangers, because you don't talk to them. You know, I've had many people tell me as I try and strike up a conversation, I don't know you. Yes. And I don't talk to people I don't know. Yes. And you're never going to get to know someone when you don't talk to them. It's um, remarkable the level of sustained chronic stupidity and cruelty as so many of our automatic memes go in the opposite way of the data and punish all concern. And yet we cling to these cult memes for dear life, not to each other, and not to uh, competency, love, and empathy. Now, in response to feeling this rage or wanting to hit something, as the internalized abuser goes full circle and is not protected by the inner self or any single member of the cult, then I feel hurt again. Because first of all, it's very hard to forgive something when you're out of touch with it. You have to integrate with your feelings before you can forgive a horrible feeling, number one. Number two, you cannot deal with trauma alone. You need help. And number three, I've never gotten any help to deal with trauma by any of my therapists or people. I've made love to a hundred women. Not one of them ever mentioned the word trauma, let alone how could they assist with it, or shared what their own trauma was. A number of these women suffered massive amounts of trauma. I can see it in retrospect, but they didn't teach me about it, and I didn't teach them about it, and they didn't ask about it. It's don't ask, don't tell. And yet, these feel like shadow parts that the cult refuses to love. And that's incredibly painful. 
In response, I feel confused, dissociative, frightened, alone, desperate. I try to get help desperately from everyone and anyone. Someone safe, someone paternal. Now, women are ready for that. I don't want anyone who wants a mother. I want a man. Wonderful. If women participated in raising and initiating traumatized, abused children into men, since the cult is producing a majority of traumatized boys who are not men, and every one of those boys has a female mother, whether she's competent or, or not, it would be, you know, it, it, it just lands as more abuse and more shame and blame on the victim to constantly harp on the fact that people who have been traumatized demonstrate traumatic symptoms. When people respond to my desperation and fear with dislike, avoidance, judgment, I feel a black dissociative humor, a cynicism, uh, and want to sabotage and destroy everything around me as a way of protesting this snake-like prison of hypocrisy, scapegoating, cruelty, trauma, and lies with so little empathy. It just feels horrific, and I want nothing to do with it. Um, and I really understand uh, the fact that we have terrorists, because for as much misery and pain as I'm dealing with around all of this at suicidal levels, we produce millions of people in even more pain. And there's nothing unhealthy about wanting a dysfunctional pain-producing factory to end. And when the pain and dysfunctional factory continues and denies that it's a pain and dysfunctional factory and then blames people you know, at each step of the way, the idea to, you know, kill a bunch of people, blow up in a bomb, you know, something like that. I understand it. It's not the majority voice in me. It's a small minority voice. And so like so many small minority voices, I don't need to and haven't acted on that voice. But I can understand how this cult, in a variety of ways, grows that voice loud in a certain number of people that feel like the only liberation is to blow up a world that is this cruel and sociopathic and that is in so much denial that without a bomb or something big, it will pretend that everything's wonderful. And we're not doing a very good job of responding to the terror that our incompetence produces. You know, the United States is directly responsible not only for a million Iraqis' innocent death, but the PTSD and trauma of millions more. Now, some of those children who lost both parents by an invading country that came in for revenge and absolutely no intelligence. Some of those children who lost their humanity and became a reptile as their traumatized brain grasped the fact that they were surrounded by sociopaths they couldn't fight, some of them committed to join Al-Qaeda or something like that and have as their, their, their the way they're going to bring goodness and peace in the world 
will be to kill the system, the people, the cult that did that to their parents. And so the United States claims to be involved in a war on a feeling. Well, that's a good symptom of psychological illiteracy. We're, we're, we are fighting the war on terror. That's a feeling. Feelings are symptoms of terrifying reality. So if you terrify people in order to fight a war on terror, you get the kind of schizophrenia, stupidity, cruelty, and insanity of the parent hitting the child for their own good and then punishing them for being upset about it and then shaming them for talking back. If you invade other countries and kill millions of innocent people in their lives and have the stupidity and cruelty to call that a war on a feeling, a war on terror, then you are creating vast amounts of people who want to give that terror back to the incompetent assholes that gave it to them in the first place. And if you call those people terrorists and just say that they're bad and do not understand your complicity in generating them in the first place, just take both of your parents, shoot, have the Russians invade, kill both of your parents and say, oh, we made a mistake and leave without any reparations. And a good number of Americans will become terrorists. And if the Russians don't understand that with a level of sociopathic willful ignorance that traumatically and psychologically illiterate cults are famous for, well, it's their own stupidity. You know, and that's the world we're in. We are creating terrified people who don't know what to do with the feeling, including me. I don't know what to do with this terror because nobody's taught me. I've been around, read 500 books, I've done a lot of therapy, and I don't know what to do with that clenching muscle that will not respond to rational thought. So why don't we actually heal terror in ourselves rather than going around the world causing terror and spending taxpayer money to bring our children into debt ecologically and financially to pursue our stupidity? Be nice. I then avoid reality and others with rage and disgust to stop that from happening, meaning I don't want to uh, sabotage and destroy everything. It's alarming when I notice that impulse inside. But it's very important to understand this impulse is not arising from the innocence of childhood. The innocence of childhood is a stem cell. It can be adjusted and mutated into any form, including highly toxic dissociative forms dictated by a cult. I start unraveling reality piece by piece. I tear apart what I love and throw it away until someone responds, or if no one responds, then I cut off the relationships and isolate. I'm in this amount of pain and wrestling with this, and people just say, hi, have you have a, have a good day, dear, and insist on operating way up here and not doing the archeological dig to expose all of the buried children all the buried selves, layer upon layer, steam packed in. They're still living there under the dirt. They can't breathe and they're desperate, but they're still living there in my body. And this effort to gloss over things is cruel and incompetent. 
at some level, it feels like a joke to call it a loving relationship. And so that's one of the basis then to disengage. But then we're moving towards dissociation, which is its own coping mechanism, but also uh, dis-ease. When I am here, I want to hit something, my dog, someone, for not responding to this pain. I understand that to say that, or to do that, is to then be judged and shamed, again, for having these symptoms. And I understand the evolutionary process of how one thing deteriorates, how a cut that doesn't get abandoned, a band-aid gets infected and can slowly destroy and kill the whole body if no one has the competency to respond. I feel and identify with the six-year-old wanting to be hit, waiting to be hit, waiting to be punished and believing that I deserve it, and leaving my body and tightly holding so that I am not in my body when I am hit. I feel frozen in time and neither trust myself or the world because I'm the one waiting to be hit and the world is the one hitting me. I'm the one terrified and the world is the one shaming me for sharing that fear. I rage in grief, fear, and powerlessness to avoid taking the shame of the world all into my body. As my inner child desperately tries to take it all in and be everything to all people, trying to be perfect in the hope that if he takes on enough baggage from the abusive people around him, then they will finally love him. But they never have. They never do. And I watch with despair as he is not loved by others and I can't cut through the pattern. I watch with despair as not only all the grown-ups and parental figures, etc., fail to love this boy, but I identify with the boy and do not know what a competent parent looks like because I've never met one. I've never met a grown-up willing and able to go into this place with me and be there. So, I knew, if we just take a moment to honor, honor the courage, honor the vulnerability, honor the transparency, honor the truth of a long corrosive wound started in the cult, maintained in the cult, intensified by the cult, spiraling down, spiraling down. Why is this so important? Well, first of all, this is not my wound. I own it as a cult member, but I saw this wound in my father, I saw it in my grandfather, it was given to my grandfather in a tank shell in World War II, where he was left to helplessly wait to die in trauma and shock, pissing his pants, searing pain, unable to get out of the tank. Well, the military gave him his little stipend, sent him back to his family to abuse his boy. He wasn't the same man. The military induced PTSD and then gave a father with PTSD back into the home. The United States military has gone out of its way to avoid understanding PTSD and trauma and to shame the men that talk about it. It's fine to hit the children, just don't talk and reveal the cowardice of a cult that wants to fight 
and win wars, but doesn't want to take care of rehumanizing its veterans. So this has very little to do with any child, it has a lot to do with the cult. But the child in time becomes the cult, becomes the grown-up, not an adult. An adult is capable of loving a child. When a child is raised by two children who are incapable of loving the child, that child does not grow into an adult. There's no model for it. There's no template. Very rare to meet true competent adults in our cult. We raise children and adolescents, by children and adolescents, referencing a lot of the reptilian brain. So if we understand that this is our cult, that to one degree or another, every single thing that I talked about is relatable to you or someone you know or someone in your neighborhood. It's not just some random appearance. Then we can start to begin with priority. Well, if you understand just how severe the ripple effects for generations are around this type of thing. Hopefully it becomes more important than the new Apple, the new iPhone, right? A competent parent is a thousand times more important than a 5% faster phone. Unfortunately, in a cult like ours, People will obsess about getting the 5% faster phone or even a slower phone that's newer while not spending a single hour that month studying competent parenting. Now, it unfortunately takes an intelligent person to understand what stupidity is and what is intelligent. Uh, and we have to at least reach the point where we understand the severe pain that our current protocols are causing. That leads towards intelligence by prioritizing a response. And then we can start sharing data. This worked for me. This worked for me. This was 10% effective and cost $10,000. This was 30% effective and cost $100. You know, and you can start sharing these protocols. But that's this is the beginning of a conversation. Where were you wounded? What if that wound remains? Because what I know is that every wound that we don't heal gets passed on to someone around us. So I haven't had kids. But when I'm enraged and scared and disgusted, I just give that to my employees. So it's not a two-year-old, but... I don't for a moment think that they enjoy it, and neither do I. These patterns go round and round in loops until, 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 until. What is the thing that interrupts the loop? And I think that's really the big question. If you understand that everyone has a wounding deterioration like this and is carrying a deteriorated wound at some level that this cult doesn't know how to love, then what is the response? How do we learn that? And that's where I'll leave it uh, for today.